Okay, gentlemen, I'm putting this video together just to review what, uh, what sort of scoring assignments were required for the Capstone Internship and your responsibility and the rubrics that you're going to be completing as we finish this out so we can get the grades in on time. From the syllabus, and these numbers have changed a little bit, students are going to receive grades from the faculty advisor, which is you. Uh, I'm going to go over the rubric in a moment, but you're going to score them out of a total of 100 points. That's actually going to be 10% of their grade, so I downgraded that a little bit. The binder is something that I would like you to review, uh, and I'm going to go over that in a moment, but if you need my assistance, I'm here to help out. The presentation was out of a score of 100. I'm going to show that to you. That was 10%. I've already posted it. The case studies, total of 30%, 15 each, and I scored those as well. I'll show you the rubric. The site host review is going to be an average of the ratings or the scoring from the survey that they will get, and I'm taking care of all that. I can show that to you later if you want. And then the, the final survey, sorry about that, the final survey um, is something I'm going to send out to them and Dr. Tavera I did make a point of telling them in their video I created for them that they're going to be receiving multiple uh, invitations to take surveys but mine is going to come out through D2L mass email but there's still others that they need to complete as well and the lifelong learning statement is going to be something that I explained in the video I sent to them and that uh, they will be posting on that final survey themselves so let's go over the rubrics that I'm going to post or posted that you're going to be completing. So first is the faculty advisor review grade. So I created this rubric and this is something I want you to score your charges on and that is on these five areas professionalism, communication, learning, effort, and overall impression. Overall impression, oh geez these are off a little bit, I'll correct that. So it's 2020 10 10 40. Change it right now and then save it. And I, this, again, will be posted. I'm glad I didn't post it until I looked at it here. So, um, you know, how professional was the student? You know, just in your regard, uh, the average or minimum is 16. So if, if you really didn't catch anything, you can put one of these two. Um, if they've done a great job, give them a 20. If they did something to upset you, bring it down here. Communication, you know, rate how well they were with emailing you, calling you, talking to you in person, whatever it might be. Um, you know, again, the top one is always meant for exceptional. Uh, this is the sort of the base, you know, the, yeah, they did good enough. Good enough to get by. But anything below that is not good enough to get by. Next is learning, and that is, are they, did they take feedback? Did they demonstrate that they want to get better, or did they not? Uh, next is effort. You know, this should be one that hopefully everybody is going to be, they gave it 110%. That's what we want. And the last one is your overall impression. I kind of gave you a pretty good layout here that this one student, would you go to bat for them? Would you, if, if, if an employer contacted you, would you go, oh, I've got the person for you? Um, I'm just going to hit this because I don't know what it does. It, 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 oh, where did it go? Did it close it on me? Faculty advisor review. Okay, back. Uh, you know, would you say, I've got the student for you? Yes, they're awesome. You got to meet them. Uh, or would you say, well, I know someone who's looking for a position, but you really need to interview them and make your own decision. Or you wouldn't recommend them for anything. Or if somebody contacted you and said, hey, you know, I'm going to be interviewing so and so, uh, what can you say about them? And you're kind of like, uh, don't. I don't want to say anything. So that's the way I want you to rate. And that's 40% right there. It's really overall your impression of how the student did, uh, how they performed in their internship. Don't consider how they were in the classroom. Okay, that's something different, just the internship. Next, this is what I used for the case studies. And I'm just going to go over this quickly um, because I, I used it. But as we move forward, I would like you to use it. And that is I grade them on the on the organization of the overall report itself, scored out of 20. Um, you know, did they provide a, a scope, a context, justification, background, and objectives for their project? Was the language they used appropriate? And that is don't use the first person, that they should be keeping it objective. 
Oh, wait a minute. This is presentation. Excuse me. Burr. Um, uh, how they delivered it, the quality of the PowerPoints, and then the overall message is 40%. That's always the greatest. Sorry about that. I got a little mixed up. All right. Here is for the case study. And this is, again, the statement of the justification of the problem. Do they do a good job? Some, they, they got better, actually, on that part. Um, some, it's like I don't even know what they're trying to do or why they're doing it. Next is that they're describing the methods and the results. Unfortunately, some of the students went from the problem is the lack of this. So therefore, I'm recommending that they get this. And that's, that's not problem solving. That's, they came up with a solution before they defined the problem. That's not the way to do it. They didn't go through the problem solving process. The third level is uh, did they make justified recommendations with cost benefit analysis? And so some students actually were allowed to get above 32. Even though they did, a, they did a good job, they didn't really provide a cost benefit analysis and it held them at 32, some at 28. Next, what sort of uh, language did they use? Some, when it was really poor writing, it automatically came down here. Um, if they were writing, I did this, we did this, or one might do this, they kind of fall in here too. Some did a pretty good job. Last is I, I they need to be referencing their resources. You know where is this stuff coming from? Uh, that actually got better on the second one, and uh, so you know they didn't have to use e APA. Some did, and that's fantastic. Um, if they did nothing, then it got down to a six. So that's the case study grading. I did everything, but as we move into the future, I'll be training the faculty advisors on how to do that. Here's the one that I want you to use. So when the students submit their binder or portfolio, however they, they do it, it's going to be scored on five different areas. And it's out of 50, by the way, just because that's how I use it in my classes. So it, it's, it's up to interpretation, right? So first, they need to have a section in which they're planning and tracking progress. So, uh, you know, what do they have planned this week? What did they spend time on? That's something they should have been tracking and doing. If they didn't do that, you bring it down here to the six. Uh, if they did an okay job, eight. If they did an excellent job and had like a whole schedule laid out and daily plans, that's a 10. Next is their journal reflective activity. And that is they're kind of thinking about what they're doing and, and going beyond just, you know, this is what I did, but what they're learning. And what we'd like to see, like to see is some critical self-review that uh, you know, I want to do better, I want to get into this. So this would, should be the, um, the basis or some, um, some, some tenets of what we'd want to see in a lifelong learning statement. So that's what we're looking for in a reflective journal, not just reporting what they're doing, because the work notes is what they should be reporting what they're doing. That's work notes. You know, daily stuff, did this, did that, here's some of my work. And that's, you know, as long as they're showing some detailed, legible documentation, we tend to go a little bit higher here. But the journal reflective, you know, if they're just, if it's all work notes, then they get a lower score. You know, my research has shown that the more reflective they are, the, the better they are at self-improving, and then everything improves. So if they're not engaging in that, th there's something there that needs to mature or get better before they can really advance to the next level. Next are the case studies. They've already been graded, but they should be presenting them. The idea is they should be able to take this binder or portfolio with them on an interview, slap it on the desk, and show exactly what they're capable of, what they've done, what they can do. Um, you know, one, one side of it is, you know, we, I did some case studies. I did this. And they can kind of, the, the interviewer can go, oh, okay, here's the quality of it. Here's the depth. They use pictures and videos. That's awesome. But these things up here, they can demonstrate that they can improve, that they could time manage and all that other stuff. So this is really critical to a high performer. This is more or less a moderate performer, but they should be able to present that stuff. Gave more points for students who took what they maybe had done and maybe had made some improvements to it or showed elements of planning for it. That would give the full 10 as long as they kind of presented it in a nice way, eight or nine, you choose. Last is organization. Um, it should be very easy to find all these elements. They should be labeled, colored, numbered, whatever it might be, maybe a table of contents. If you feel it's very easy to find everything you're looking for, give them a 10. That, that tends to be the highest scores, the organization. Second would be work notes. Third or tied would be case studies. And then these tend to be where we get possibly lower scores if the students didn't follow through. So that's basically the binder, the binder grading rubric. Um, I've been using it in my classes for a long time. It goes very, it should go quick, especially when you get used to it like I am. I can usually rip through these things maybe five, between five and ten minutes is what I take. And so if we all have like four or five charges, we're talking less than an hour of time. And so please do that. And then what you can do 
is email me and just give me the student name and then what you scored on each one of these elements. Same with uh, the review, the, the review of how the student is, you know, the recommendations and everything. Give me the name of the student and then the individual item breakdowns because I'll put that all in Excel. And then I've been running some uh, correlations on things. I'll be graphing things based on the results I have from the performance in my classes because I want to see how you know, how things are, see if there's any sort of trends going on. So those are the elements. What I need you to do again is your faculty advisor review. The rubric is going to be on D2L. I, had, I had just improved it. I'm going to post it. It's only worth 10% of the grade, though. Uh, I will also be asking you to do the binder or portfolio scoring. It's out of 50. It's 20% of their grade. If you need some advice from me, I can definitely do that. But um, it's fairly straightforward. Again, there's three elements that are fairly easy to score high. Two that require a little bit more insight, a little more time to read. So that's pretty much everything. So if you have any questions, call or email me. And um, yeah, this should be good. Thanks a lot. Bye.